Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. Whoa, calm down. Even in this cartoon universe, the street value of a kidney can't be that low. Welcome to a bright digital board game version of Rocco's Modern Life, characterizing the process of adult life as a fast-paced, stress-inducing grind where effort effortlessly and directly translates into reward. It's a world where money buys happiness, yet happiness is considered equally important to your money, health or education, condensing those into a point total, meaning that you and up to three other players can compete at life, which is much more fun than doing it in real life. The victory conditions are less vague, and you don't require subjective and hurtful judgments. And there are bonus objectives that give a mild contribution to the end score. It's an original digital board game, no physical version as far as I know, and important to note right off the bat, there is no single player campaign, like the one you would play in Anti-Hero or something. You can play online, but as usual I wasn't keen. But I tried it out for an incredibly short moment, and the online activity was not encouraging. I suppose that makes sense. It's a pretty niche game, in a genre that you're more inclined to play with friends. I mean, just how much can you actually try hard in Monopoly? Okay, wait, scratch that. I did test it again a bit later though, maybe half an hour or so, and a couple of games were going on, so maybe on occasion you'll be able to find an online match to join. Fair warning though, it will probably not be the most consistent. But I bought this more for the 1 to 4 player same screen multiplayer. Perhaps unsurprisingly. And it does support remote play together. And unlike some of the other same screen weird multiplayer games I play, this was quite a hit with friends. You can play against AI, but for some reason not in competitive mode. Peaceful only. But you can't pick their difficulty level. I and a friend played against two AI opponents, and one was smart enough to come in first place, and the other one somehow came last. And rather pleasingly, seemingly was modeled on a clueless new player. Because they did some illogical things multiple times. I mean seriously, how many times are you going to forget the dress code to your job? They even coded them to behave like frustrated humans in those situations, having them furiously click the button repeatedly. That's unique, and the AI is not worthless. Sometimes worthy opponent, other times curious oddity. That won't necessarily be enough for you to play against three of them alone, but it's a cool option to have, especially when you're playing with a few humans, and would prefer AI players fill in the unoccupied spots. Instead of laughing at each other, you can laugh at the computer. And people say I shouldn't be afraid of the rise of the machines. They're even replacing us in the people-centric field of buffoonery and human error. And perhaps that's creepier than the joke is making it sound. Quick side note, I do tend to write these reviews ahead of time by quite a bit. I probably wrote this before chat. GPT went live. Just an amusing tidbit, and rather strangely, the reason you can't add AI in competitive mode is seemingly because there you can fling curses at other players to hinder them and play more offensively. So apparently that's beyond them. Temporarily close down the building so that they can't go to work. Have all the other players experience more crime. Target the player with the highest score. Sacrifice some of your health or happiness to take away some of theirs. Well, figuratively. Otherwise that would just be inefficient and spiteful. Everything costs time, and when you run out you automatically end up back at your apartment. End of week. Walking, working, purchases, studying, all push the clock forward. And time management is integral, otherwise you'll feel the cruel sting of father time. Well, apparently will William tell you, instead of using an apple, will use some sort of muffin, while at the same time assuming things will go badly. Placing shrimp on your eyes instead of coins. Without active curses though, generally you won't be worrying too much about the other players. It's more about improving yourself within the turn limit you've selected. Get a pet for easy bonus points in exchange for more responsibility. Who's a good strategy? You are. Yes you are. Nobody likes a sad animal. Spend money and time to work out, work to earn money and experience, get an education, then get a better job. Start at the bottom and work your way all the way up to CEO of Vexcorp, where you get paid a whopping five times as much as a fry cook.
Another heads up, it's very unlikely that you'd reach those heights, let alone get a good enough education to qualify for it. In the long game, this is close to the best we ever did, almost becoming a compliance officer. My guess is the reason to go that way is the points, as there are easier ways of making money, but in the long game, the educational points total maxes out at PhD, I believe. And the utility of some of the other jobs is questionable too. I mean, why work at a university? You need higher level degrees in order to earn similar amounts of money. The answer can't be passion for learning because, and this is not a dig, this game teaches you nothing. Except maybe time management skills if you want to be generous. Although since this situation is kind of close to the reality of the matter, maybe this qualifies as satire? Maybe it's a strategic play? Because a lot of times it's a good idea to work at or close to your ideal facilities. For instance, you working at the fast food joint decreases your odds of forgetting to eat. A surprisingly common problem, resulting in less available working time the following week. Which is a best case scenario if ever I heard one. Plus you're right next to the gym. Get healthy, not buff. Work in retail if you want the inside track on deals. And love commerce. Plus the malls where you buy pet food, decreasing the odds of you forgetting to feed your pet, maybe work at the bank to deposit money as soon as you get it, preventing you from losing it through robbery or other encounters. For some reason, even your pet toys can be stolen. Sometimes something even worse. Plus it decreases your odds of missing a rent payment. I make no claims as to how much sense that makes. Plus close proximity to the bank can make it a bit easier to go old Wall Street. Even when the market is bad, it's a bear market. Just beware, you can lose money too. Apparently across all my playtime, this is the total amount of profit I made through stocks. You can also buy things to travel across town faster, as well as a fridge to make eating automatic as long as it's stocked, or a phone to pay electronically. All these things come together in a way that may make you think that a micromanagement plan would rule the day, and perhaps smarter viewers would be able to think of one. But there are random elements such as the stock market, and the random encounter cards, kind of like community chest, except you have to take one every turn, slash week, and sometimes some jobs are unavailable, at least at that time. A random discount can come along, expediting the purchase of an item, maybe take a chance on the lottery. Plus if you're playing competitive mode, the mentioned charms may be able to help you out, or hinder you. So I doubt your plan would be foolproof, because a digital substitute for dice is present. Visually it's great, light color palette, heavy cartoon style. The kind of style that accentuates most attempts at humor and probably helps create archetypes an ultra hipster, uber technophile, and the seemingly inescapable glasses and braces of the fast food cashier. Know what they mean when you see what they drew, but they're cute and comical characterizations so they don't feel heavy handed. Well, it's not heavy handed enough to detract. Gives short bursts of comedy. Funny even though it's stereotypic. Fair warning though, it does go dirty at times. Oh really, that's heavy handed. And sometimes it goes dark. But it is amusing. But is this absolutely necessary? There's enough here to make new players smirk while they're vying for board game supremacy. Tasty. Weird reference, but cool. Musically, it only has one track. That's pretty good. Easy listening that captures the feeling of sea life. It's amusingly relaxing. You can play 10, 20 or 30 week game, which they estimate to be about 40 minutes, 80 minutes or 120 minutes respectively per game. But it probably will be longer unless you put time limits on each turn to account for everyone thinking. Actually, there is a longer game mode called Marathon, but I never played it because I assumed it didn't end, since it doesn't have an estimated time below like the rest of them, but apparently it can. So maybe in that game mode you try and become the CEO? I have played for about 6 hours in total, mostly fun with friends, short games and long, but really only something you'll play with company. And as said, it's a hit, but I'm going to go very conservative here, and assume like many same screen multiplayer purchases, you might not get as much out of it as you want. 
the opportunity for play not arise as much as you think. So let's make the assumption that you'll only play this once, but on a long session. Two hours according to their estimates. A harsh approach, but I believe not completely unfair. Because, as said, the game does not have a single player campaign. The game is cheap on Steam, 99 Rand full price, 24 Rand 75 on sale. Which means if you only played a single long session, that's 12 Rand 38 cents per hour of gameplay, which is bad. But this this is a tentative hour value. For me, it was 4 Rand 13 cents per hour of gameplay, which is okay, but is much better by comparison. So please carefully consider what kind of gamer you are, and how many opportunities would truly present themselves for you to make full use of this digital board game. But once again, it's brilliant if you can. I've enjoyed my sessions, and the game has a very reasonable download size as it only takes up 205.18 megabytes on the hard drive. And it works on the Warhorse seemingly without incident. Stereotypically, it's not the kid-friendliest. For instance, it has this poster. Sure, that's tamer than the rocket, but still. But not all of the gags are dirty. And some of the worst ones, like the rocket and that hang-in-there poster, were subtle enough that it took us a while to even notice them. But yes, fair there. Otherwise, the fast food clerk may call you junkie on occasion. But otherwise, the only thing that could possibly offend someone, I believe, is maybe the idea that you can make kimchi with mold. Or maybe a cartoon, but... And lastly, it has same screen hot seat multiplayer. The game's essentially based around it. Plus the remote play together worked for me. I believe I played with someone all the way in Japan. It lagged a lot on their side, but still, we had fun. The game has nice, funny, lightly colored, bright, exaggerated cartoony visuals. Quite fun gameplay, perhaps a bit more palatable than other same screen multiplayer games, as I've yet to play with someone who didn't like it. Sure that sounds like a low bar, but apparently my taste is divisive among Amongst friends. Although in all fairness, you do get the grips of most of what the game has to offer fairly early. It's a unique digital board game that doesn't have dice but is still random enough. I believe to prevent the micro checklist from winning every time. Plus the game is amusing if scarily human AI. The game is funny in tone, more humor than a board game usually has, if it can be a bit grim at times. The music is decent, an easy listening track that captures the bustle of working life. Actually pretty calming and good, if it is the only track, and it's so calming that it actually fades into the background a bit. Enough so that I kind of forgot about it. Apparently this replaced the city's traffic noise. On the maybe side, it has no story, which is to be expected from a board game. Plus, it has no campaign, so you play it for as long as you want to. Mostly with company, because I don't know how long the AI can keep you busy. Maybe you'll be able to catch an online game? Come on, play it! Let it remind you of cartoons of the 90s, if not Rocco's Modern Life. Maybe Cow and Chicken? See, there's a pork butt. There's Chicken. And oh look, there's Cousin Boneless. Choip, 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 choip.